Hey everyone, this is Danny Oak. And in today's exciting video, we're gonna talk about the Power Automate Copilot Preview. And this truly is a breakthrough in the Power Automate technology. And in this video, I'm gonna walk you through the three different places where you will see these new features of Copilot show up in Power Automate. And to be fair, I'll do a side-by-side -side comparison. I'll show you what the current situation of Power Automate looks like and how it evolves with the new Copilot functionality. So stick around, this truly is a breakthrough in technology, but first, here's my intro video. So the 2023 Microsoft build has gone live and all these spectacular announcements are being made. And in this video, I'm gonna focus on the ones for Microsoft Copilot available in Power Automate. So let's just jump right into it. The first thing I wanna show you is how the homepage of Power Automate has enhanced with the preview of the Copilot. So what you see over here is our regular homepage of a specific environment in Power Automate. And when I say specific, it could be whatever is your environment. And this is pretty common. You know that you come in over here, you see this nice banner, you see all the learning content, and it's on the homepage. And then when you click on the hamburger menu, it will go ahead and slide out. And then you see all of these other functionalities. This is what it is right now. Now, as I switch over to the other tab, this is what the homepage looks like with the Copilot preview of Power Automate. And as you can see right over here, uh, there you actually have this text box. And in the text box, you can put in some text to actually describe in detail how you want your automation to work, which means you're actually feeding the Copilot some information to at least start building the Power Automate flow for you. So this is the very first thing, all right? Uh, so now that we are here, let's go and start putting in some information. So in this description box, I'm gonna go and give a description. And this is what I'm gonna put in. When someone sends an email mentioning me, send me a Teams message. Uh, and so after that, I can just go ahead and click on enter. And now is the AI's process of giving me some co-pilot help starts right over here. Um, so it's on the, on the top left, you can see that it's basically a two-step process, at least right now in the preview. And it's telling me, hey, what will you do, your flow do? Well, the first thing is, it gives me the text that I actually already put in. So we haven't lost the text. This is the one that I typed in. And then after that, it says some suggested flows. And as you know, each flow has to start with a trigger. So the trigger is something that we actually said. It said that, hey, when someone sends an email mentioning me, so it immediately went and said, hey, uh, use the Office 365 Outlook connector. And then after that, it is going ahead and putting in two other actions. And it's really smart because in order to identify me truly, it does need to go and get my profile. So it went in and added that action directly. And then it's going ahead and putting in the action for Teams. So I like what I see over here. Let's go and click on Next. Now, when I click on next, it is going to go ahead and make any connections. Now, if this is the first time that you're going and using any of these connectors in this environment, then it will actually have to go and do that. So it will ask you for a little section of authentication, but in my case, it was already done, so I'm good. Again, it shows me an overview of what are the triggers and the connectors on the right. So I like that it maintains this consistency. It is telling me what the connections are, and it's also telling me what I'm trying to achieve. Uh, so we're done with step number two, which is the last step. Now let's go and click on next. And this is what I found exciting because this had a whole different look and feel compared to the one that we've seen before. Um, and just to show you the difference, on the top left, I have another tab of this is what it looks like when we were going ahead and creating it. See, it's a different environment altogether, but this is something that we are used to. And this is what it looks like right now. So as I toggle back to the existing one, you see that there is quite a few changes that have happened. Uh, again, this is a preview, so things will change. But overall, I like this netting type of a look over here because you're able to go ahead and actually see everything um, on the top, on the bottom left. You've got the capability to go ahead and zoom in. You can go ahead and zoom out, you can actually go ahead and uh, you know totally zoom in further just to whatever is the real estate that is already populated. It goes ahead and zooms it in. Um, and then I like this functionality over here. This actually shows me what is the exact section of the zoomed in functionality that it is covering in the overall flow. So it's actually showing you, which is the React Flow mini map. Um, and it reminds me a lot of how we are able to see all the nodes in Power Virtual Agents, uh, but I'll save that details in for next video. So here we are. We are now in this new Power Automate Flow design section and Copilot Preview is currently still available on the right to give 
give us further assistance. Uh, but it also helps us with what we have done so far. It tells me, hey, when someone sends me an email mentioning me, send me. So this is what I typed in. And then after that, it's giving me some advice. It's like, here's your flow. If you want to make change to it, just say what you want and gives me some examples. So let's just work on some of the examples that it's giving, all right? It says add an action to send an email to send an email, all right? So now I'm just gonna type that in. I'm gonna hit on, and I hit enter. Uh, you could go ahead and click on this arrow as well. And it starts to work on it. It is giving me a functionality as well to stop the generating, which means that if I typed in something and that was not what I wanted, I can go ahead and stop the generating right here so that it doesn't put any extra time for me to go and manually delete it. Um, that's pretty neat. I liked what I saw, so I'm gonna go and keep it over here as is. Uh, but now I just wanna see what all these actions do. So if I actually go and click on it, all of these settings are no longer here, but they are on the left side. So check this out. If you go back to what we were originally used to, all of these steps are here and the settings are inside each of the step. However, in this new technology, when I click on it, it actually opens up the sliding option on the left and I'm able to go and do all the changes over there. So I can go ahead and now add the parameters. Parameters add is to CC from all of that magic happens over here directly in one section. So it makes it a little bit easier. It takes a little getting used to, but remember this is currently still in preview, so it may be subject to change. Uh, but anyway, you can put in the to, I can go and put in the from, I can go and put in the subject filter, um, and basically that's the only things I want right now. All right, so when I click outside, but what are my parameters for this? Like, am I going to run this flow when it's specifically coming to some person? I can go and add that there. Am I going to run this flow if it's specifically coming from somebody? I can go do that. Any subject filter you're looking for, all of these things are available right here. In this, you have all this functionality under the show advanced options. You see, it's making sense over here because now you can see how the two work side by side. These are the differences, uh, but it's just helping you to see all of it on, on together. Um, okay, so I'm gonna actually go and now just click on this outside, uh, click on this one outside, and I'm gonna go and click on my, my profile. In my profile also, I can do the exact same thing. Parameters, I can go and put in the settings, I can go and put in the code review. That's pretty neat because right now for code review, we actually have to go and click on the ellipse is over here and then I've got to go and do this peak code you know so it does show me the data right here uh, but if on the new way I can directly see all of this so that's the one thing I actually like because now I'm able to see the overall flow logic on the right side but on the left side I can see all of these other settings side by side so I really like how Microsoft has actually now used this entire visible real estate which I made available and really comp populating it all of this with you know the data that you have performed over here all right uh, but let's keep moving forward in the post a message section I can do as I click on it it immediately shows me the next set of settings available so again parameters you know I'm going to say that okay uh, the post has been sent by a flow board I like it. Uh, post is being in, in the chat with the flow bot. I'm not actually gonna say the post is gonna be to a channel. Um, and then after that, it's gonna ask me for my team. So I'll go ahead and I'll select a very specific team. This is gonna be for the family health. Uh, in the family health, which channel do I want? I'll say I'm gonna go and put in the general one and then I can go and put in the exact message that I have, right? So in the message section also, over here, you've got the insert data from the previous step or do you want to use your PowerFX function? So in the PowerFX function, when I click on it, you've got the full function available. You've got the dynamic content. You can go ahead and say, you know, is it from the get my profile? Perfect, I can go and do that. Or if I can go ahead and put in from the body. See, you are familiar with all of these things because again, when you go back to our Power Automate, the existing section, um, you can go ahead and click on inside it and then you can go and put any custom value and then immediately you see this option for dynamic content on the right versus in the expressions and you can go and put all this information in on this one again it is not that different so the adoption of this new style is very seamless because you're already familiar with it but this is kind of the overall of how it is we came into this new style um, directly from the home page we gave it a little bit of description and after that we were able to explain to copilot some changes that I wanted and we were able to go do all of that so from here on you can basically go and click on save Granted, I have missed a few things, but you get the point that this is the overall saving process and overall building process. So this is number one. Let me go and show you the second way. So the second way you might be familiar with because this was already announced earlier, but I'll show it to you anyway. So we're back in Power Automate and this is in the very specific environment. And over here, I'm going to go and click on create and on create, you've got this option. Describe it to design it. Again, it is in preview. 
And just to show you, even though this is the new environment, if I go to my existing environments, you see the environment has changed. Again, in the same place for create a flow, describe it to design it was already there. So that's something you might already have functionality. So I won't spend too much time explaining this, but at least I'll show you what it overall encompasses. So when I click on it, it now goes through this, again, two-step process. Now, this also has subtly changed. Uh, so first of all, this pop-up message comes in. It says, get more done effortlessly. effortlessly. Um, I'll click on the try it. And then from here on, it gets to be very similar to the first demo that I showed you, but its functionality was available right on the homepage. So over here, I'll go start typing in something. It says, when someone, and the moment I do that, this actually has something, it remembered what I suggested before. So I'll just click on that. And now you're familiar with this because this is the exact same flow we just built. You're familiar with the triggers. You're familiar with the two actions. I like what I see. So step number one is basically complete. Go to step number two. Again, make sure that I've got all my connections done. While it's doing that, it tells me on the right again, which one is the trigger, which two are the actions. I like everything and I'll go and click on next. So now after this, we are back to this one location over here. You're familiar with this because I just walked you through that. And the look and the feel is very consistent. Um, and you can see that it also maintains everything. You know, you are able to go ahead and basically click on the section over here so that on the left side, you've got all the settings like parameters, settings, code review. It even goes ahead and puts in, you know, the about. So it just gives you a little op overview of things like that. Same thing on the my profile. Parameters, settings, all of this is generally available. All of this right here. So you're accustomed to this different style because I just walked you through it, but this was the second technique. Now let me show you the third and the last one. So we are taking a look at the current situation of what Power Automate looks like for your environment. Um, and when I go and take a look at my existing flows, this is what it looks like. And if I just randomly select any of my flow, you see that you've got this edit option, which has the pencil icon. You are familiar with this. And just in case, if you go ahead and click inside the flow and you come into this little detail section of the flow, Again, you see this edit option for the flow. And what it does, when you click on it, it directly goes inside the flow. This is where you can go and customize the triggers, the actions, conditions. That's where you do all those jazz. You are familiar with this. But let's switch over to what this new Copilot preview is. So again, I'm back in the new environment of mine, which has this Copilot feature. Um, and I'll go and now see one of my existing my flows. In my flows, I already have two of my flows. But when I go and select on it, you see my edit, which is the pencil, it has a drop down. This is not available in that existing flow environments of mine. See the one difference, no drop down over here. So now when I go back to the new environment with the new feature in the drop down, I see two options, edit with designer, try AI power editing preview. So if I go and click on edit with designer, it takes us into what we're already very familiar with. This is what is called as the edit with designer, all right? You're familiar with this section. We just came in, you saw all of this jazz, everything is good. But if I had to go back out again, and if I go and select on the edit, edit with AI powered editing, that's the one that I just showed you. When you go ahead and build that brand new flow, this is what it looks like. Now it is AI powered using the Copilot for your assistance. Um, so the beauty of this is that it's not that you have to have a brand new flow to go ahead and leverage this functionality. No, you can go ahead and do this with your existing flows as well when this feature is made available. And then after that, again, everything is the same. You've got the flexibility to ask your copilot and get its assistance to add more functionality to it. So say I want to go ahead and add a new step. Well, there's two ways to do that. First of all, you can basically go and add a comment for the AI to process it. So I'll just go and add this comment, which is basically add a comment after the create a task step. So this is create a task. After that step, I want to add the ability to add a comment. So I go ahead and just click on this, you know, um, sending it uh, for the AI copilot to go and process it. It is working on it right now. As you can see, it's working on it. I have the option for it to stop the regenerating, which means stop the AI from generating an answer for that. But I'm going to go and let it work on that. Okay. So again, it's the what I told you is to add a comment after the create step. So right after this, it went ahead and basically gave me the ability to go ahead and add a comment. And if I just click on it, I have the settings available on the left side to go ahead and do all of that. The second way to go and do it is what we're already used to, but there's a slight change to it. And let me first go back to our previous step, right? So this is what we are used to, right? If I go and click on this, add a new step, I click on that, I add an action. 
What it does is it gives me this functionality to go ahead and now choose an operation, whether it be an action, whether it be a condition, I do all of this. But what it does do is everything below it gets pushed down. So you do have to scroll up and down. Check this out in the new design. In the new design now, if I go and do the same thing, click on it, it asks me if I wanna add an action. If I click on it, it now slides off from the right side. So the overall logic of what you already have still stays very prominent in the display section, but now all your new actions, whether it's a new action, or whether it's gonna be a trigger, or all these other things are showing up right here on the left side. So I like the side-by-side -side consistency that you have, so you don't lose the design, but at the same time, you have the ability to go ahead and add more action. And that's just for the actions. I can go and click on this again, and I can go and say add a parallel branch, same problem, come up, same options come up, and I can go and basically toss that to the right. And don't worry, even though you're just seeing the actions and the triggers, you are not lost the condition. Come up on the search, just go and start typing in for condition, and then this control section shows up again. This thing you're very familiar with, because that's the same process that is available in the original design as well. So you haven't lost anything, but you overall gain the efficiency of seeing your design plus the ability to add more additional actions or more conditions. So this is the third option that I've shown you, and now you've seen all the three features of the new Power Automate Copilot. So in closing, I have a few ideas I wanna give you. First of all, go ahead and opt in for this. When you get the option to do this in your tenant, opt in for it because it comes up at your environment level. That's one thing. Second thing, this is Copilot Preview which means you don't wanna go and use this for your production ones, but you definitely wanna keep an eye on this because even though it's preview and yes, it is subject to change, you get a good idea of what is the potential of this so that if you've got any future projects or any solutions that you're gonna build, it might be worth the while to actually wait and leverage this. And finally, you can start leveraging this for your existing flows as well. So when the time comes that you need to go ahead and advance your existing flows or improve it, you can leverage Copilot's assistance to go ahead and do exactly just that. So hopefully this video got you excited to start leveraging Microsoft's Copilot functionality built into Power Automate, and this will actually help you to take your Power Automate skill set to a whole different level. And as always, keep using Power Automate. Hello, hello, hello. So if you like this video, go ahead and click on that subscribe button and smash that like button. Also, if you have a few extra seconds, can you go ahead and put in a comment, either say something nice or give me ideas for my next video. And until then, see ya.